Hi everyone, I'm Denise. I'm an engineer at Facebook working on video playback. Today I'm going to talk about the work that we did to improve video experience for users accessing our service from India. In this talk, I'll briefly cover a variety of improvements that we made. To start with, why India? So improvements that we make as um, part of this effort can and will benefit all users, but we intentionally prioritized work that would have the biggest impact for users accessing our service from India. We had observed from efforts in previous years that the work that we did did accrue benefits to users in India, but those benefits were smaller than the top line averages that we saw elsewhere. The large population in India means that many users can benefit from the work that we're doing here and that our experiments will have statistical significance to measure the impact. India also has some unique characteristics in the way that users access our service. So the majority, the vast majority of users access our service over a cellular data plan. And they also do so um, from their Android phones. So we knew that we could focus specifically on the experience of users on Android accessing um, Facebook through their cellular data plan to derive the most benefit. In this talk, I'll start by covering what steps we took to understand the problem. Then I'll review a selection of some of the work that we did to mitigate the problem. Finally, I'll review our findings. To start, we analyzed the root causes of video playback stalls. We leveraged internal tools to aggregate data from multiple sources and categorize the top issues contributing to video stalls. For example, we found cases where the bitrate um, ladder in the manifest had too many gaps and didn't have low enough bit rates. We also found cases where the CDN response was unexpectedly delayed, leading to stalls. We found cases where our adaptive streaming logic chose poorly. And finally, cases where there was internal congestion within the app. So it's important to note that the Facebook video streaming experience, unlike many other apps, um, has a lot of competing purposes. So Facebook isn't only for video consumption, um, but it's also a marketplace um, where users connect with each other through groups and many other pieces of functionality. So we had to make sure that while trying to watch videos, we could prioritize video traffic. We also did user research. Beyond traditional user research, we sent a team to India consisting of engineers, um, project managers, and a data scientist to meet with users and find out what really mattered to them. For example, um, we had known that over the past few years, India did tend to have fairly generous, affordable data plans, but talking to users, we found that they were still data sensitive and concerned about hitting their daily data caps. Unfortunately, we did have to cut this trip short due to the growing reach of COVID-19, um, and we had to get the team home. Now, I'm going to briefly talk about the impact that COVID-19 had on our work. So COVID-19 is obviously a worldwide crisis impacting all of humanity. It also impacted the way that our team worked this year. So for example, I'm recording this talk from home rather than being with you guys in person. Um, and a lot of the work that we had to do now involved remote collaboration. We also found that it dramatically influenced the way that users accessed our service and also the quality of the networks that users were accessing our service on. Um, Basically, due to COVID-related lockdowns and stay-at-home orders, a lot more people were home during the day watching videos, consuming videos, and also doing competing activities on the network, like trying to um, work remotely or access schooling remotely. Um, and this resulted in more traffic that basically made more networks around the world resemble or have the conditions that we had seen in India, which only increased the importance of our work of improving video consumption on congested networks. We also saw throughout COVID-19 crisis, users are connecting virtually through our services. For example, users in India um, connected during a nationwide candle vigil. They live stream themselves lighting candles and their neighbors. We also saw on Easter Sunday, the papal mass was now live streamed to users all over the world. Um, and many fundraisers for um, people impacted by COVID-19 um, uh, were happening on our service, um, connecting users in need. 
The next decision was how we would measure the impact of this work. So like many of you, we have multiple ways that we can um, can measure the performance of video playback, looking at stalls, looking at initial startup time, visual quality. For this work, we wanted to specifically look at this concept of a bad session um, and reduce the prevalence of bad sessions. So first we had to define what a bad session was. We decided to mark a session at bat as bad if there is a stall during playback, if the video took too long to start or the user gave up before the video started after waiting a um, meaningful amount of time, if the quality was lower than we would have liked, um, or if there was an error during playback. And rather than looking at the overall number of sessions and seeing the percentage that were bad, we wanted a metric that would really be representative of the experience of users who might not be consuming very many videos because their experience was bad. So while, rather than overweighting the metric towards the number of sessions, which would have been skewed towards users with good experiences watching lots of content, um, we instead looked at what was the bad session rate per user and averaged these together. So for example, say that I'm a user who has a good device and a good network and is able to watch 100 sessions today and all of them were good. So I had zero out of 100 bad sessions. Um, I might have had a friend, however, who tried to watch one video and that one video threw an error and was marked as a bad session. So in this case, rather than having one out of 101 sessions be bad, um, we would instead compute an average bad session rate of 50% because I had zero bad sessions and my friend had one. Um, in practice, we found that the bad session rate and the average bad session rate per user did track each other pretty closely, um, but there were some optimizations that we made, especially around the, the first video that's played in a session that did disproportionately benefit um, more occasional users. Now I'll talk about the work that we um, executed on to achieve improvements. So the work is in three broad focus areas. The first is on the video encoding side. The next is on the video playback side, including our ABR algorithms. And finally, I'm going to touch upon some work that we did on the network side. Again, this isn't comprehensively all the work that we did as part of this project, but um, these examples should be representative of the types of improvements that we made across the entire stack. On the encoding side, the first topic I'd like to cover is increasing um, low bitrate lanes. So if you recall, this was one of the areas that we identified in our root cause stall analysis. Um, at Facebook, we ingest and encode a wide variety of content. So we have um, videos that you might just upload and record from a cell phone um, to professionally produced music videos. Um, and there were scenarios where if the original bitrate on the ingested content was below 500 kbps, we wouldn't always deem it necessary to actually generate additional lower bitrate lanes. Our analysis showed, though, that 500 kbps wasn't low enough. It was too high for some markets. So we had to, um, we had to increase the coverage of bitrate lanes. So again, previously we might have had a manifest that only contained a bitrate lane at 400 kbps, whereas now we would have that same video also have a lane available at 100 kbps and 200 kbps um, and be more accessible for users on a variety of networks. Another decision that we revisited was our gap sizes. So historically, and by historically, I mean about five years ago, we had decided that we wanted to maintain the flexibility to um, adapt quickly to changing network conditions um, and only use two second long gaps. So we knew that this came out with a trade-off um, for compression efficiency, but we thought that it might be worth it for the increased flexibility. This was a decision that we revisited um, and we experimented with using five second long gaps. With the switch to five second long gaps, we did see the expected compression efficiency wins, and this ended up yielding higher visual quality and lower stalls that outweighed the benefit of being able to adapt more quickly to a new quality. So the actual savings did depend on the content and the, um, the resolution, but in general, we saw between like a six to 8% improvement in compression efficiency as a result of switching from two to five second long gaps. Another change that we made was to relax the requirement to have a unique resolution per quality lane. 
So before I dive into this, I want to briefly touch upon FBMOS, which is the metric that we use to um, compute visual quality scores at Facebook. So FBMOS is a reference-based metric where we can compare the quality loss of an encoded uh, video with the upload source at a given viewport. This is normalized on a linear scale from 0 to 100, 100 being the best quality, 0 being the worst. And we found that we could achieve better visual quality, especially at the lower lanes, by using slightly higher resolutions than we would have traditionally used. So previously we may have had a manifest that looks something like this, um, say from 144p up to 480p from 100 kbps to 800 kbps. Um, and let's say that this was at a 720p viewport and the resulting FBMOS scores. Um, after this change, we may instead have two representations um, at a 360p resolution and two representations at a 480p resolution, targeting the same bit rates but yielding higher visual quality scores. And this was another way that we saw that we could increase the visual quality um, for users on um, lower throughput networks without sacrificing uh, stalls. Next, I want to cover some changes that we made to our ABR and adaptive streaming logic. So encoding, um, encoding decisions and ABR decisions coexist in a pretty delicate ecosystem. So in some cases, our ABR logic was tuned to be fairly conservative to avoid stalls. And this wasn't a problem when um, our lowest bitrate line was still a reasonably high visual quality, but as we introduced more lanes at even lower bit rates, we didn't want to overstore them in cases where it might not actually be necessary. The first thing we did was introduce a better concept for low bit rate lane avoidance. So again, an important change that we made was to increase the availability of low bit rate lanes. Um, and this was important for users on smaller viewport devices who might be on more congested networks. But we wanted to avoid using these lanes unless connectivity was actually pretty limited. So what we introduced was the ability to configure a minimum quality bar and then penalize choices that dip below that quality bar. So they might still be available if necessary, but they wouldn't be chosen as frequently by default. So in this case, again, imagine that we had a 144p lane at 100 kbps with a MOS score of only 20. We can make that available when necessary, but in general, we would try to avoid playing it if we didn't need to. Another change that we made was how we decided to set limits for users on cellular data plans. So in general, we want to avoid playing the highest bit rates when a user is on a cell network to be good stewards of their data plan. Um, and we had found on a research trip that even with relatively affordable large data plans, users still hit their data caps on a daily basis. So traditionally we had defined limits on cell by a combination of bit rates and resolutions. But we realized that what we were really trying to do was ensure a consistent visual quality bar across multiple videos in a given video playing session. So rather than saying all videos can play up to, for example, 1 Mbps or 480p, we wanted to instead set a visual quality bar um, and target that. So we might have a video A, which is maybe more complex to encode, um, that would have lanes from 144p to 720p, um, where we might have another video B, say it's an animated content that's cheaper to encode. And for video A, we may need to allocate slightly more bytes to achieve a visual quality score of, say, 70. Whereas in video B, we can set the limits more conservatively um, to achieve that same quality score. Um, and we saw that by doing this, we could cut data usage while increasing watch time for users on limited cellular networks. Bandwidth estimation is a critical component of our ABR decisions. And one problem we observed with trying to reduce the overserving of lower bitrate lanes is that a single slow, anomalous slow request could pull, pull down our average too steeply and result in too much content being played at um, a low bitrate lane. So we collaborated with our infra data science team to adjust our bandwidth estimation algorithm to reduce the impact of outliers. So in this case, we might have 
a graph of bandwidth samples represented in red, where you would see that there's one very slow request. And traditionally, it would take us a number of seconds to rebound from that and gradually realize that network conditions have improved. And by reducing the impact of the outliers, we saw that we can speed up that rebound um, and jump back to higher qualities more quickly. On the playback side, we made multiple changes to improve the overall playback experience on congested network. So the first one I'd like to cover is how we handle prefetch. So within the Facebook app, autoplay is a critical user experience. So you might be scrolling through the watch tab or through your news feed, and we want our videos to start playing as quickly as possible and for the whole experience to be seamless and delightful, which it's not if you have to go to the network to fetch all of your data. So traditionally, we would queue up a list of videos to prefetch and a duration to prefetch. And especially as we increase the GOP sizes, we would see that we were prefetching more data. Um, and that sometimes we would run into trouble where we might still be prefetching, say, video C when we want to start playing video B. Um, and then video B wouldn't get enough network throughput to be able to play without stalling. So rather than prefetch, say, 10 seconds of each video, um, we would instead break this up into multiple phases. So again, we could start and say, prefetch five seconds of each video. When that's completed and we're still not playing any other content, then we can do a second phase and round robin additional content. And this way we still have the flexibility to have content prefetched when we need it, but be less likely to interfere with videos that are playing. Another change that we made on the playback side was rethinking how we do uh, video cache eviction. So we have a limited cache on disk that we can write prefetch data and as we play read through data so that if you do rewatch content, it will be available in the cache. However, if a user, say, for example, watched a 30 minute long video, that could have the side effect of evicting everything else from the cache and the user would be pretty unlikely to go back and rewatch that content. So we um, tweaked the way that our cache eviction logic worked. Um, and we limited the percentage of the cache that any single video could consume. We also increased the priority of prefetch data to make it harder to evict with in-play content, which again gave us a good balance between users who might pause and resume a video, while also not evicting the data that we had prefetched for other competing content. The final pillar that we invested a lot as part of this effort was on the network side. So we worked really closely with engineers and traffic on um, improving CDN reliability, um, and also engineers working on traffic protocols and networking protocols. So prior to this, we had been using HTTP2. So I'll show, as shown in this diagram um, in purple, um, the control of networking logic is split across multiple layers in the stack. So Quick was a project that the traffic team had been working on for a while, but that was finally ready to test and ship earlier this year. Um, so we on the video playback team worked very closely with um, the networking team to measure the impact um, of Quick and see how we can get the most optimizations out of it. So again, compared to HTTP2, Quick allows us to have a lot more control of the network layer at the application level. So we can have more control over head of line blocking, improved multiplexing, more room for customization and instrumentation. And we saw that by moving from HTTP2 to Quick, we saw solid wins in reducing stalls, increasing visual quality, and increasing overall video watch time because users were having a, a higher quality of experience. What was really interesting was that we had started these experiments um, at the beginning of the year. Um, and continue to let them run throughout the spring. And as congestion on networks around the world increased due to COVID-related lockdowns and stay-at-home orders, we actually saw that the benefit of Quick disproportionately increased. So that was good proof that um, Quick was really important to succeeding on congested networks and the type of networks that we had observed in India that were really important to us. And one thing that's really exciting is that we've seen a lot of wins from deploying Quick so far, but we haven't even fully tapped out the benefit of Quick. So this we think is an investment that can continue to pay dividends in years to come. I'd like to dive into a quick example to show why we saw improvements of um, head of line blocking from Quick. 
So traditionally with HTV2, we had shared connections, which yielded some benefits, but we would occasionally run into problems. So if the same server were handling audio and video requests and the client weren't acting um, content quickly enough, the send buffer could fill up and audio could get delayed behind video. And we know to unpause, we need um, data for audio and video um, and poor interleaving can result in stalls. With Quick, we were able to implement uh, much more fine-grained multiplexing and interleaving of content. Um, so again, instead of having the audio stuck behind the video, we can make sure that it was interleaved properly with the video responses. And we saw this generating reduction in stalls, which was also um, supported by data showing a reduction in time to first byte for audio. So how did we do? So we did throughout the nine months or so that we've been working on this, we've seen big growths in watch time. Obviously not all of this is driven by performance improvements, but there's also increases in watch time coming from COVID related behavior changes and also product and feature work that other teams at Facebook are driving. But we've been really proud of the reduction in bad session rate we've been able to achieve. We've been able to continue to drive this down over time, even as congestion on networks increases. And it's something that we're continuing work on for the remainder of the year. Um, and beyond this specific project of targeting improved video quality in India, we think this model of really collaborating closely with engineers across video encoding, playback, and traffic is a good model to replicate in the future for other areas we want to invest in. Um, again, a lot of changes do have to happen holistically across the stack, um, and this close collaboration has been incredibly beneficial. And finally, I want to emphasize that we want Facebook to be a product that's available to everyone. We don't want it to be available only to users in the best networks and the best devices. We want anyone to be able to watch video that's meaningful to them from the devices that they have and the networks that are available to them. And we're proud of the work that we've been doing to be able to make this a more accessible experience. So thank you for everyone listening to this talk. Um, I'll be available to answer questions um, and have a great rest of your conference. Wow.